everyone! I hope you're all well. For those of you who have been cooped up all week and have already lost track of the date, it is in fact Mother's Day. So if I've just reminded you, you're all welcome. It's not too late. <laughs> this is a mini talk I've prepared on Genesis 29, which I'll just read. Um, so this is verses 31 to 35. When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. Again she conceived, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, now at last my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. So he was named Levi. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, this time I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. It's hard to read about Leah without feeling really sorry for her. She was married to a man who didn't love her, who had never loved her, and who had only married her so that he would also marry her sister. Jacob is a patriarch in the Bible, the one Israel is named after, and yet in this story he is the cause of so much pain for this woman. Leah was not unloved purely in a passive sense. She didn't look like a, it didn't look like a void to be filled so much as it did a tangible thing pressing upon her. She was actively unloved by Jacob, her husband. It was a, a part of her everyday experience of life. If you've ever lived with someone who strongly dislikes you, then you might be able to picture how that feels. But this wasn't just a roommate or a friend, this was her husband. This man was responsible for her, her life was dependent on him. This was an unloved that was thrust in her face every day and an inescapable part of her existence. But even in this situation, God is good and Leah knew it. The first thing she says when God gives her a son is, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. And isn't that exactly what happened? We're told that God saw Leah was unloved and so enabled her to conceive. In these words, Leah is so incredibly in tune to God's heart for her. And then, as we often do, she just misses the mark by uttering her next sentence. Surely my husband will love me now. Well, if God has seen her misery in her marriage and in reply has sent her a son, isn't it natural to assume that he intends the baby to be an answer to her problems? I know that I'm guilty of this. I mean, not this exact situation, obviously, but when something is wrong, I struggle to see what God is doing in my life outside of fixing that problem. And then by waiting for what I expect from him, I miss what it is he's actually doing. This last year, I've struggled with crippling loneliness. It's not been something I've been able to fix on my own and has had a huge impact on my day-to-day -day life. I spent weeks praying to God to send me a friend that I could do life with. I still haven't really seen an answer to those prayers in the way I expected. I don't have someone to debrief my day with or who I meet regularly one on one, although I guess not many of us are still doing meetups anymore. Um, for a long time I was frustrated because it felt like I was stuck in this rut and not going anywhere. Every time I spoke about this to people, they would say things like, that's hard, but it's good God's teaching you. And I'd go away so angry <laughs> because I didn't feel like I was learning anything at all. And who are they to make light of my problems? What do they know? Um, but just like Leah, I was missing the point. This last few months, I've been adopted into a family community that has changed my day-to-day -day experience. And then about three weeks ago, I felt real joy enter my life again for the first time since the loneliness began. And immediately, alongside the joy, it was like a dam was unleashed and all the things God had been doing in me that I'd failed to recognise came rushing through. This included lessons he'd taught me, passions he'd given me, and ways of living that I hadn't been able to implement in my sadness, but were now taking shape seemingly without effort on my part. 
and suddenly I could see all these things I'd been unable to see while my gaze was fixed on my one prominent issue. For Leah, it takes four children for her eyes to shift from the husband who doesn't love her to the God who does and the blessings he had for her even in her struggles. For me, it took six months and my problem being removed before I could see the other blessings God had given me in the time I was waiting for him to remove my loneliness. So the question becomes, are there ways that you've blinded yourself to God's blessings by having your own expectations of where he'll move? If there are, then how long will you wait to praise God for the blessings he's given you, even within your struggles?